in case you're listening and you have a thyroid issue, you have hypothyroidism, meaning a slower thyroid, or you're wondering if you do, you may want to pay attention to this. And if you have brought up or it's been brought up around you, the topic of iodine and thyroid function, then this is your episode. And I guess if you haven't had that conversation come up, this is even more so your episode. And it's not just for you. Of course, it's for all the women and uh, men are not immune to this one either who also may need to hear it, but not know to ask about it. My guest today is Sarah Banta. She's back and I'm going to read her bio in just a moment, but really she's amazing. We're going to talk at the very end about some of her favorite tools to use as we talk about, you know, if you could look in a crystal ball, what's the future of medicine look like of each of us taking charge of our own health? What what does that look like for you? And Sarah is not a medical doctor. She's uh, very wise. She's very well educated and she's put that to very good use. So... I'm Deborah Atkinson. You're listening to Flipping 50, where I address your top struggles and concerns and mostly hope to inspire you and to change the way we expect and demand to eat. I share what to eat, how to move, and how to change your mindset so you can have the energy and vitality you want, need, and deserve in this second and better half. And my guest, as I alluded to, is Sarah Banta. She's a returning guest. She's the owner of Accelerated Health Products. In addition to the host of Accelerated Health Radio and TV, she helps her clients and listeners reach their optimal state of health through proper frequency enhanced detox supplements, cutting edge technologies, and modalities. Her journey hit rock bottom about 15 years ago. She was suffering from Crohn's disease, hormone issues, PCOS, and heavy metal toxicity. And after Western medicine couldn't give her answers or solutions, she discovered natural solutions that actually worked. As she worked on her own journey, she was hit with her nine-year-old son's diagnosis of leukemia. It was that moment that she knew she had a bigger calling in life today. So fast forward to today where she serves her clients and listeners with cutting edge protocols that combine scalar frequency based supplements, Chinese medicine, healing devices, and much more to detox, reset, and rebuild their body, mind, and spirit. She has a degree from Stanford University in Economics and Psychology Institute of Integrative Nutrition, and the Invincible Wellness System. So let's dive in to this episode. Sarah Banta, thank you so much for coming back. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited to be talking to you, Deborah. always. And this is so selfish, really, listeners. So (laughs) this is literally how sometimes topics come up because I know when it is a question for me or I'm challenging, now, wait a minute, I'm getting two incongruent answers from people I respect. I want to bring it to you because I'm guessing that you also are getting similar or you could. So bringing it up before you might know to ask is my goal. So we're talking about this thyroid iodine connection. And I'm going to post a link in the show notes to a prior episode of Flipping 50 that I did with Dr. Alan Christensen. And in one of his books, he actually talks about, you know, iodine could be a problem related to thyroid. And then I began working in the world of Sarah Banta, who just has a knowledge beyond, beyond. (laughs) And so I want to unpack this one thing And that is, you know, iodine and its relationship with thyroid. And yet, 
I think we've got to unpack why why is iodine, first of all, necessary? Why is it a necessary supplement in today's world? What does it do? Why don't we get enough of it in food? Is that is that where you would like me to start? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I, I remember friends always telling me, oh, you should get all your nutrients from the foods. You don't even need multivitamins. Well, in general nowadays, that's absolutely not true because our soils are depleted, number one. And we have all of these anti-nutrients in our plants that are ripping our guts up, causing leaky gut and inflammation. I don't know anyone hardly that doesn't have some inflammation or gut issues, bloat, constipation, diarrhea, all of those things. You think about it, say we are getting those good nutrients in our food. It's not being absorbed, Deborah. Because we've got inflamed guts, but then our, our, our soils are completely depleted and it's no different with iodine. The iodine sources that we are getting it from um, are now contaminated. Fukushima, Chernobyl, all of the sea vegetables, even the fish, um, those were the sources that we would get it from. Those now have radio contamination in them. And then people would say, well, I, I have my iodized salt. Well, 36 out of 39 salts tested out there not only are stripped of all of the other minerals besides sodium, and that's why you get bloated and you get puffy face when you eat restaurant food and processed foods, but the iodine that they're putting in it is only 10 to 20% absorbed. It's probably toxic. And then the salts also are coming with those great microplastics, which are so, I'm sorry, but is that a nutrient that we're missing? <laughs> so really that's where, um, you know, the accelerated ancient salt is so different. It's 62 minerals and you're getting that full broad spectrum of the electrolytes and the sodium the proper sodium that is so necessary for your body. But as far as the iodine goes, um, it is needed. And it's needed for your brain, for your body, and some symptoms of iodine deficiency that people need to look out for are, are you overweight or underweight? Chronic fatigue, especially when you're waking up in the morning. Do you have depression? Did you know that it is the number one um, cause of depression is iodine deficiency? And 96% of the United States is deficient in iodine. Then another thing that you um, may be a sign that you're, you're deficient is muscle weakness, getting reoccurring infections, you're sensitive to cold, you have cold hands and feet, your body temperature swings up and down, you have headaches, constipation, low libido, heart rate or blood sugar or blood pressure issues, fluid retention from your lymph drainage, allergies or dry skin, um, hair loss, brittle nails, difficulty breathing, impaired concentration or memory, um, slow speech or a hoarse voice, um, painful menstruation, infertility and miscarriages. You know, we were touching on estrogen dominance before we got on. The number one cause of estrogen dominance is iodine deficiency. So it all plays in fibroids, PCOS, all of those female conditions that people in um, your listener age group are suffering from, that is from iodine deficiency. And if you're not detoxing um, properly the toxic estrogens from the environment, from our food supply, from um, everything that we're being exposed to properly, and then you will get this estrogen dominance. Well, that iodine is really important for, for the detoxification of these toxins and for detoxing the radiation. So there's so much there. Um, and I want to give you a, a chance to ask, ask any yeah. questions. Well, good, because I've got some. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so here's my question. So you rattled off some alarming statistics. Like number one cause of depression, 96% of us are deficient in iodine. Here's my question. Who the hell is testing or suggesting I test? Because never, I'm 58, never in my life. Has a Western or a functional doctor suggest we test? 
That's because they're afraid to overdose and to have people take iodine. So this is where it gets um, really sketchy. Just like any other testing, quote unquote, in the United States is where are these, where are these test fears coming from? You know, iodine is associated with increasing IQ in children. And I had um, a mutual friend, Dr. Amy Horneman, ask me, can kids take iodine? And the answer is not only can they take it, they need it. And the pregnant women need it more than anybody. But there was a study that may have shown a temporary um, hypothyroid transient um, stage when starting iodine supplementation. So that's why I ask people, don't test your iodine levels for the first six months of starting the regimen with the acceleridine iodine. And so this study was in 1948, and it was never replicated. It concluded that there that theoretical hypothyroidism could occur of this excess iodine. But this um, this study recommended a dose of two thousand micrograms, which is so much higher than what they're recommending right now, which I believe is like one hundred and fifty. So here we are. They're even recommending a dose way bigger than what the daily RDA is recommending. And there was no clinical symptoms of hypothyroidism ever been noted with higher doses, according to the study. And um, the world expert circus, Dr. Circus, states people may safely take up to 10,000 to 200,000 micrograms without clinical adverse effects. But because of the study, it's kind of like what's happened with the salt. And we all need to be on a low salt diet or a low cholesterol diet. It goes along the same lines. What is the purpose of all of these restrictions? It might be that they're trying to get you on some medication right? So if someone has a healthy thyroid because they have healthy iodine sufficiency, they may not need their Synthroid. They may not need their their Hashimoto's medication. So that's just something to think about. And when I talk to people about how you're feeling, because I've had many clients come to me saying, my doctor's freaking out, my TSH is through the roof. Well, why is your TSH through the roof? This is why, is that when you are, when the whole uh, the whole body is deficient in iodine, iodine serves over 100 trillion cells in your body, not just your thyroid. So you have to think about it. If you start taking iodine and that thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH, right? It's not even a thyroid hormone. It's actually a pituitary signaling hormone. It wakes up and the body says, oh my goodness, I love this iodine too. I want some. So as as soon as you ingest it, the whole body wakes up and says, I need more. And the TSH will temporarily shoot through the roof, screaming at you saying, we all need it, not just the thyroid. Don't leave us out. We all want that iodine. And then once there's a sufficient amount of iodine in your body and all the cells are happy, then things will calm down and the numbers calm down. So what I tell people is, how do you feel? Do you have any of those symptoms that I listed in the beginning? How's your energy? How's the brain fog? Is it going away? And usually they say, well, I feel great. So that is where you really want to look. Are you experiencing fatigue or hair loss or the headaches or the weight gain, the dry skin? When you have a normal T3 and T4 level, but your TSH is through the roof. So you need to look at all the numbers and a lot of doctors just look at that TSH. And then it's it's interesting to note, there have been multiple studies. Um, one in 1917, where they proved that iodine reversed goiters in a study of over 2,000 schoolgirls that were taking the equivalent of 18,600 micrograms. Now, remember, Deborah, the 
the RDA is 150 micrograms. So we're talking about a huge amount. And there was no um, adverse side effects. And they actually had a lot of success getting rid of those goiters. And there were more studies, Dr. Zeng um, reversed lung cancer tumors in mice. There was another one where, um, let's see here, the, the, the biggest study was done in 1997 with Dr. Abraham, Dr. Brownstein, and Dr. Fletches followed 4,000 patients and administered 12,500 to all the way up to 100,000 micrograms daily. And 100 micrograms were administered to diabetics. And because low thyroid function is also associated with type 2 diabetes. So there's a lot of things here that are interrelated and a lot of um, misnomers and myths about iodine. And even the smartest people in the thyroid community will say, yes, you need iodine, but be careful. Be careful. I don't want to tell you to take too much. Hmm. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so a couple of things. For for any of our listeners who don't know, let's just go back to basics. And if we're telling somebody something they already know, that's okay, but better. Could you define goiter? A goiter is a, a essentially a, a symptom or a tumor-like in the thyroid and suppresses thyroid function. So it's it's shrinking that just like it shrinks fibroids and, you know, iodine acts as an antibiotic, a natural antiviral, anti-allergenic, um, anti-inflammatory, and all of that is on outside the cell or extracellularly, but inside the cell, it, it helps with hydration. So Essentially, it is part of the Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Um, and and any time you hear itis, it is inflammation. So it's reducing that inflammation. Great. Okay. So what is causing the rise of hypothyroidism? And I'm just going to stick with this back to basics. So hypothyroidism versus hyperthyroidism. So most most frequently, the complaint is about hypothyroidism. Like if you're feeling like you're gaining weight or wondering if my metabolism is sluggish, a lot of times that's where we'll go. We'll talk about maybe B12 or vitamin D and we'll talk about iron, but someone will also say, maybe it's my thyroid. And that hypo means it's not functioning. But Sarah, what's causing this? I mean, we do see it more and more. Absolutely. So that's a, it's, it's all, <laughs> I love this question because it's talking about liver health, thyroid health, the way the whole body works together because our bodies are so intricately um, working as one and one, one coggle falls off or one wheel falls off and everything falls off. So let's look at our diet and the toxins we're exposed to in the environment, the laundry detergent we're using, um, the, the sprays that we get exposed to, the pesticides, the germ, the germicides, herbicides on our food, GMOs, all of those things cause leaky gut, but then they also, those toxins get lodged into our receptor sites for iodine. So, you know, go back to chemistry. I'm laughing because my daughter's in chemistry class right now. Um, (laughs) And if you look on the periodic table, you've got iodine, fluoride, bromine, and chlorine all in the same family. Well, when you don't have enough iodine in the body to fill those receptor sites Fluoride and bromine are going to fill those receptor sites and clog those um, those sites so that it slows the thyroid down. Then also all of the toxins you're taking in through your food supply, um, for, through the environmental toxins, all get stored and have to be processed by the liver and then the liver backs up because it's working overtime and our livers are not meant to process the amount of toxins that we are exposed to now. Well, what 
happens in the liver besides processing these um, excess estrogens, right? So all those toxins are getting backed up, getting backed up. That we we look to the liver to convert T4 to T3. Those are the thyroid hormones, T standing for tyrosine, 4 and 3 standing for iodine. So number one, we need the amount of iodine sufficient in our body to make T3 and T4, but we need the liver to be clean and functioning optimally to convert that T4 to T3. Otherwise, we are going to have a slow thyroid and a slow metabolism. That's why, Deborah, I push people to have three to four liver flushes a year. And it's really important because we're being so bombarded by all of these toxins. And the gut, the gut is also being destroyed. And the gut is where the good hormones are being made. And if you are, have a leaky gut, you are recycling some of those bad estrogens, which then are bombarding the liver again. And what's also interesting, too, is insulin resistance is actually something that leads to gallstones. And the reason I'm bringing up insulin resistance Mm -hmm. is people are thinking, oh, well, I have to stay away from saturated fat and animal proteins. Well, those animal proteins actually help cleanse the liver, believe it or not, because it helps release the bile on a regular basis versus when you're on a a low fat diet and then that, that release of the bile doesn't happen or doesn't occur to flush out the bad bile. So just a side point that we want to make sure we are getting the right amount of good animal wild protein um, and staying away from the chicken and the conventional beef, which are full of amyloid proteins or plaques that we can't break down. And you are using the the wild proteins that the body can use all of the nutrient dense um nutrients that are in there. You know, people think kale and blueberries are the superfoods, but actually organic wild animal proteins have more of those nutrients in them. And you need all of those nutrients for your thyroid to work, for your brain to work, for your whole body to work. And that's why with the accelerodyne iodine that I recommend, you have to back that up with some good electrolytes like the accelerated ancient salt to plump up the volume and push those toxins out. Does that make sense? It does make sense. And for listeners, I I have a better sense of it potentially than you because I've gone through one of Sarah's cleanses. So I did it and and know, you know, what this is like in the regime and it's not that difficult. It's just, you know, getting used to a new sense of here's my Here's my habit. Here's the order I do things in. Um, so visually, I'm such a visual person. I think when you're talking, I'm thinking, where was I standing in my kitchen when I was taking my lick of salt? You know, uh, so I'm seeing it then, but definitely not difficult. And you so very clearly define, you know, here's the role of this and why you're doing it, which makes it so much easier to kind of adapt and jump on board. So talk a little bit about like the accelerodyne and and what that is as opposed to uh, like iodine that you might get in food. Right. So number one, the iodine's really not in food and that's what's so amazing. Mm-hmm. It it just really isn't and and it's not enough too. Um if if it is radio contaminated, you are essentially taking an iodine source and radio contamination that are competing for the receptor sites. So who wins? I don't know who wins. So the accelerodyne is um, 100% bioavailable. It's monoatomic, which means back to chemistry class, that's one molecule of iodine and it has 100% bioavailability. And that is the only form of iodine that can feed all 100 trillion cells in the body. When you have a diatomic iodine supplement that most people are probably taking out there, 
that takes the body energy, which now you are Hashimoto's hypothyroid and don't have a lot of cellular energy in the first place. It takes energy to break that those molecules apart to use that iodine. Now, when that happens, only 10 to 20% is absorbed. So the acceleridine also is scalar charged with frequencies to detox the body of the radiation to actually reverse damage done to the DNA by the mRNA, the graphene oxide, the spike proteins that we're being exposed to. So it takes it a whole nother level above any other iodine supplement. The other thing I wanted to mention that I forgot to mention, what is normal when you have the T3 and T4 levels and when you're, when you're going to the doctor? It, it, may be a false positive test because people, especially in the over 50 range, their adrenals are making T4 and T3 at at three in the afternoon, which is compromising the adrenal health. And that's why it's really easy to get adrenal burnout when we're older. And as you, Deborah, are so amazing at teaching women that they need to focus on the strength training and not the chronic cardio, because that's just going to drive their adrenals into the the ground even more. This is part of the reason is that the the adrenals take over some of the thyroid function in the afternoon if they're, if they're compromised. So anyways, that the increased iodine will help making sure that the thyroid is taking is doing the the proper work of the T4 and T3 conversion. That was a gold mine right there. So, I mean, probably I'm going to guess uh, less than 1% of anybody listening doesn't experience that afternoon lull. Right? Yes. That that drop in energy and to my Girlfriends listening, said with love, said with respect from a recovering endurance junkie. Okay. I get you. But those who are trying still to, you know, get in that long run and, you know, I think really just listen to yourself, step back and listen. And hey, if it's working, don't fix it if it's not broken, but pay attention not just to how you feel while you're running, but how do you feel the rest of the day and the night and how's your appetite into all the little pieces that hint out there that maybe, maybe this isn't the minute for you to be doing it. Absolutely. So. Yeah. And Sarah, you know, unfortunately, sometimes I say this more and more, so I'm probably going to have to take a look at doing a video podcast versus audio but <laughs> because you are just, you're radiant. Aww. You, you know, you really just do have the picture of health because there is no way to fake that. When you look at somebody's face, you look at them in the eyes, you see it, you know, and I think size can lie a little bit. Because you can buy a lot of things today, but, <laughs> I, you know, and and I think you can you can work yourself to death, and and that potentially is not the answer either. But uh, you can get to a certain size and yet not feel good at all. But you cannot fake good health. It's just it's there. It's written in your your glowing eyes and your skin. I want to ask you. Personally, I mean, given the depth of research that is very clear that you do about everything, what's your exercise regime like? I, well, I have you in the back of my mind every time I work out. <laughs> that darn little voice, Jason. Yeah, so no, I'll, t- I'll tell you my history because I am, um, I'm an open book. So I, in high school, I was a rower. I crewed, I crewed at the national level. So I, in my bones, I had the endurance, right? But rowing also requires muscle strength. So it was this beautiful um, match of it. And all three of my kids do it. And so I still try to keep up with them. But I would say in my 30s, I was doing chronic cardio on the rowing machine at least an hour and a half. I've done hot yoga strength training classes. I've done running, of course. Everyone's gone through their running periods in life. Um, And today, at the age of 46, I go into my garage 
After I take my Acceleridine, my silver, my accelerated keto pills, do a couple emails and have my tea, I don't really drink coffee anymore. I will go in there and I will get on the rowing machine for 20 minutes. And that is a warm up. And if you were to check my heart rate, it would be maybe at 70 or 80. So I'm not pushing myself. It's more of a, a almost a meditation of getting my mindset around what I'm going to do. And then I've wakened my body up and then I get on either my vibration machine with heavy weights and I do push-ups, sit-ups, um, you know, squats, any type of exercise that you would do just standing in one place. I do it on a vibration machine. And then I also do some other things off of the machine just with weights. And I'll do a total uh, with stretching at the end. My total workout is one hour. So as far as hard working out, I'd say 20 minutes of of warm up on the rowing machine. And then I'll take about 30 minutes of strength training and 10 minutes of stress stretching. And that's also my time to listen to podcasts and kind of get my, my mind set for the day. And no one is to disturb that hour of my life. <laughs> <laughs> the, what do they call it? The she shack in the garage there. Okay. <laughs> yes. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Okay. Thanks for sharing that. And, and I just want to come back to, I, I think what is just this incongruency. I think first of all, we deal with some resistance that we have ourselves. If we've always thought a certain way, we've always maybe trusted in the medical field for giving us the answers and healing us when we needed it. And now we're beginning to take some of that back. But on one hand, it feels like, well, hmm, don't know if I should be making these decisions for myself or what it is that I need to know that I don't know. And then you're on this path and you're exploring these new options to your health, but your doctor may throw in, you know, that little additional source of resistance. Maybe it's a tone of voice or it's a look or it's a flat out, you know, to my friend yesterday in his appointment, this is really voodoo medicine <laughs> when he brought up, you know, a functional option that maybe would solve some problems. You know, <sighs> Talk a little bit about, say, optimal versus normal, and and I'm going to ask you to go out on a limb here and just what do you see for the future? Because you have taken things really into your own hands and, and are helping and educating others to do the same. What does medicine and health look like in the future? Mm, I love that question. I think it's going to be frequency medicine. And what does that mean? Um, I, I enhance some of my supplements with scalar frequencies that we've talked about based on Nikola Tesla's um, science. But what take that one step further, there are devices out there. I think I've talked about the Genius Insight app, and people can find all of this on my website, uh, sarabantahealth.com. But the Genius Insight app is something that I talk into every morning. It's on my cell phone, and it scans my voice for what's going on, whether it's my chakras out of alignment, my aura is out and needs to be rebalanced. Are my vitamins low? Am I low in iodine? It tells me that. Do I want to eat salmon today or is beef or is organic beef really what my body's asking for? Where are my hormones? And it's really cool because it'll tell me and I can feel it um, if I'm higher in testosterone that morning or am I lower? And it's funny, Deborah. I live with two daughters who cycle and I just asked my daughter, I said, when are you having your period? Because I'm feeling it right now. And my scan on my phone tells me that my hormones look like more like PMS symptoms versus not. And I'm in perimenopause. So it's, it's really interesting. So when you ask, where's medicine going? That type of tool is where it's going. And you're going to be able to maybe not even need 
physical supplements, but you're actually feeding your yourself the frequency of iodine or the frequency of your vitamin D. I mean, the sun is giving off frequencies of vitamin D. So it's nothing different than what God had intended. But then you've got these, you know, and then I have a, a device called the amp coil, which is, um, Uh, the bigger daddy, essentially it's amplified treatment where it can tell you what, what is going on. Do you have a virus? Do you have Lyme disease? Do you have um, food poisoning? And then it treats it by um, sending out the, the opposite frequency of that virus per se and um, negates it essentially cancels it out. And that's how we're actually working with my silver, the accelerated silver, something that I haven't even told you, but it has frequencies in there to go after, devitalize um, the the virus currently. And there's monkeypox coming. We are now providing frequencies in there for that. So you can use supplements with frequencies in them. And it's like you're taking a remedy just for that. So that's where I see it going. And all of these things don't have side effects like um, some of the, you know, the Western medicine prescriptions do that you have to really be careful with. And I also really try to teach my clients to go with their gut. How do you feel? I know at the age of 46, I feel better than I did when I was 20. My energy here in the afternoon is just as strong as it was when I was in my garage this morning on the rowing machine or doing whatever I was doing. And that's your, that's your, um, that's your real feedback. It's not what the blood test says or your doctor says, how do you feel? You know, especially when it comes to the thyroid um, and the doctor's telling you one thing or wanting to put you on medication, that's probably not going to do you any good because if they're putting you on Synthroid, that is increasing um, your TSH. That TSH, like I mentioned, is a pituitary signaling thing. If it's not increasing the conversion of your T4 to T3 and actually making that T3 work in the body and increasing ATP production, which is true cellular energy, then it doesn't do you any good. So you're popping a pill and it, it, it takes care of one of the five different factors that are related to thyroid and to metabolism. That's why I'm so excited about the accelerated thyroid that's coming out if you want to chat about that for a minute. Yeah, and we just, I hate to open up a whole nother thing right before we jump off, but what I would love to do is, number one, uh, you have to promise you'll come back. Absolutely, anytime. (laughs) And where's the best place for everybody to go find you? Let's mention that again. SarahBantaHealth.com, and that's where all of my podcasts, all of my articles and you can join my free group coaching there. There's no reason for me to not provide it for free. You know, if people don't want to just go right, they just want to learn. That's a great place to start. And the, the Accelerated Health Products shop is connected to that website as well. So sarabantahealth.com is where you can find everything. Perfect. Love it. And um, I have been taking copious notes, listeners. So I put all the resources that Sarah mentioned, and that will be right beside her website and the URL is in the show notes. So I want you to go there and get it. And that is the absolute next place that you want to visit. Sarah's a wealth of information. So she could go drilling down deep in any one area that you want. And I think just to separate things out and kind of leave it with this discussion on iodine and thyroid and, and of course how it's not just that because it is such an integrated thing. It's been so valuable to have you here. So thank you again, Sarah, for coming over and chatting today. Thanks, Deborah. Anytime. Okay, listener. So it's up to you. So I'm sure there are questions that you have that I didn't answer and and maybe even lingering questions you're wondering, oh, I'm not even sure what to ask. <laughs> and that's okay. So keep listening. 
if you're ready for a second step, you know, go over and browse around and look for iodine, look for thyroid, if that is a particular area of interest. And Sarah's got a lot of information there. So you're going to find additional information in the show notes and the links at flipping50.com forward slash iodine and thyroid. So you can get to the show notes there. Leave me a comment or a question if you've got it. I would love to know if this is valuable. So we usually are relying on you and your comments to know that this is a topic we need to visit or we need to revisit. So what are you waiting for? Let's start flipping 50 today.